In this video we're going to build a countdown generator uh, using software product magic. Now this is basically a script with private label rights that I found on a private label website. Uh, it was probably Resale Rights Weekly because that's where I get most of my uh, PLR from. And basically it's uh, contains two JavaScript files, an index file, and some instructions. Now, you don't need to know anything about JavaScript. Um, although I know something about programming, JavaScript I, I never use, so I really know very little about it. Uh, but that makes no difference for what we're going to do here. The setup HTML file, if we double click on that, will tell us a little bit about uh, how you set it up and how you customize it. So it explains that uh, in the config file there are a series of uh, settings, tells you not to delete the quotes, it's the things between the quotes. But what we're gonna do is follow these instructions and change some of these into tags that can be used by software product magic. So let's take a look, for example, at um, in options.j. Okay, so here we go. This is, um, I've played around with this already, so it's got one of my domain names in there, but normally you pop in your settings that you want and that's it, you save it and you upload it. So it's not hard to do, uh, but we're gonna make it so that we can supply this to somebody, they can do all of their settings in a nice user-friendly piece of software, press a button, it'll create it for them. So it takes all of the fear of having to edit a JavaScript file, uh, out of the equation. So up here we've obviously got the date and then a space and then the time that we want this to run and the date is clearly in month, day, year format. So the first thing I'm going to do is replace that date with a tag and I, you, you can call these tags whatever you like. All tags are made up of an opening square bracket followed by a hash followed by whatever you want inside the tag, what the tag name is, then a hash, then another square bracket. Okay, and you should obviously call these things so that they make sense to you when you get them into the software in a moment. So I will call this one date, and you can use upper or lower case. And just to remind myself, I'm gonna call it MDY. Okay, over here we've got the time, and again, change this. So that it says, um, I'll just call it time. Okay, I'm not gonna change the display format. I think the display format the software does now is fine. Finish URL. So again, we're gonna change that for something with a tag. I'm not gonna let them configure the font size or color. The only other thing I may want to let them change is if I edit the index file here, so open that up in the editor, uh, what I'm looking for is the bit where they sign it, which is there where it says your name. Um, and I'm just going to change that so that we ask them in the software what their name is. There we go. This is Software Product Magic. We're going to call this countdown generator and obviously you can be as inventive as you like with your software names created by this will be your name unless you're building software for somebody else description of what it does uh, about box url will normally be a link back to your website and the link that appears the text that appears on that link. Do I want to show this description at startup? And normally I'd write a bit more than that, but for the sake of the video, I'm just skipping through this. I'll, I'll fill in a little bit more in a moment. Um, so yes, we'll show the splash screen on startup. Template folder, so that's where those files are. I just moved a copy of them to my Windows desktop in a folder called Countdown Generator. And here is a list of the file extensions that the software is going to work with and modify. So if I pull back up that folder that's got the files in it, we know that in order for the 
this to work, it needs to edit the index file, which has got an HCM extension, and the options file, which has a JS extension. So we just need to make sure that both HTM and JS are in this list. And this list is just a list separated with commas. Um, so I noticed JS isn't there, so I'll put comma JS on the end. And if I wanted to supply a link to a help file, I could maybe write a, a help page and upload it to my website and also put my own advertising on there. And if you put that in there, it will create a link on the help menu uh, to that page. So that's the front page filled out. Click next. So the next thing is we're going to scan for the tags that uh, we've put in. So you remember we've told it the folder we want to scan through. And now it's going to go through and it should find three tags, four tags, sorry, uh, which is name, date, time, and the finish URL. And it has, it's found all four of those tags. If at the point you scan, it fails to find a tag that you've put in, then go back and get that put right. Look in the file, it might be you've done a, you've made a typing error, you've missed a hash off. Okay, now I want to make this do something extra. When it gets to the date, I'm going to want it to put in a default. So I'm going to add some tags because I need to do some behind the scenes calculations. So I'm going to add three tags and we will call them day, which will be the day of the, the day number of the inner date. And we will do month and we will do year. Now, I need these to be processed before it asks me what today's date is. So I'm going to move these up. So they're so, above that. Uh, it's going to ask what their name is. Then these we're going to calculate without them putting anything in behind the scenes in order to work out a default value for this one. And then we're going to have them put in the time and their finish URL. So we're ready to go. We've got the tags. They're in the order we want to work with them. Click Next. Okay, so up the top here, we know that we're filling in tag one of seven, and we know it's the tag that we called your name. So the question could be, please enter your name. And we know that this is the name that is going to appear on the sales page or the countdown page. Uh, if I run it, come in here and just scroll down, there's the tag that it's going to replace. So I might want to tell the person that because they, they don't know what it's going to do. So please enter the uh, your full name. This will appear on the countdown page. So next tag. So now remember I said I need to get the day, the month and the year so that I can construct a default value for the date question. So we're going to use system value. And in here we have a number of things we can access. Here I want the day number. Then in the month I want a system value of the month number. And then in the year I want the year number. So year number in there. And now we're on to entering the date. And here we put um, enter the date that the countdown finishes. In the help, we'll put please enter the date the countdown end in the format uh, month day yeah now remember I said I want to give them a default value now here's the clever part normally you can just type a text value in uh, or whatever for a default value but I want this to default to today's date so remember we set these three tags called day that's important to note how you've done them. capital D lowercase a y these are case sensitive month capital M year with a capital Y so down here, I can now construct a default value based on the tags we've already defined. 
So I can put in here month and again put the square brackets and the hashes in just like you do with the other tags. Then a forward slash, then the day, then a forward slash, then the year. Yeah, next, let's check that now. That's in. And the next question is the time. So please enter the time the countdown finishes. in 12 hour format uh, enter the time and we'll give them a default just so they can see what it should look like and i'm just going to hardwire that in 1201 okay that's tag six finally the finish url please Give the redirect URL for when the countdown ends. And there we go, a bit of text I've already prepared. And no default value for that. Okay, we're done. Click finished. Now when this runs, I want to ask them where to create the software. I wanted to create the files and open the folder that it's created them so that they're ready to upload to their server. And I could just display a finished message, but better still, I'm going to say display a file. And this is a file name of a file that it will find in the output folder. So I know that I've got a file called index.htm, which is going to get modified, have their name put in it and so on. So I'm going to open that up. Now I could, in that folder there, create a file called readme.htm and put some instructions in or readme.txt. Uh, leave that in that folder and then in here have that open it. Okay, where do I want to create the software? Let's uh, just make a new folder on the desktop and put it in there. Program name, countdown maker. Don't need to enable the save load feature for this one. I will give it a background image because I happen to have quite a nice background image of a countdown clock just there. And we'll leave the button label in this one as finish. It's not a demo, doesn't need a reg code, and I'm not gonna do the branding tool for this one. Uh, that will all explain in subsequent videos. Let's uh, save this now. It's just good practice to save it. Demo countdown, and now we'll build it. So let's take a look. Click on open location, and here's our files created. So let's give the uh, let's give the program a test run. Okay, so there's a splash screen. Uh, this is the option that the user can have to turn that on or off. So if they don't want to see it again in future, they can untick the box. And here we go. So enter your name. That's the first thing we put in. Click next. The date. And there's that default date that we asked for, which is based on today's date. Uh, let's just change that for this demonstration to be uh, a couple of days time. The time with the default in it, and then finally the web address we want to go to after the countdown finishes. And I'm just going to save it in the testing folder on my computer for now. Uh, this is what you should see when it finishes running, because uh, I told it to run that index page. If um, this could just be opening a README file or whatever, and it also pulled open the folder with the files ready to upload to my site, which is exactly what we expected it to do. So there we are. That is a demonstration of building a countdown maker using software product magic, the easiest way to rapidly create software that will make you profit.